Hey everybody, normally the Oakland police post the video you're about to see on YouTube. Uh, I didn't see it, so I'm actually amplifying it in this way. Uh, they posted it on Twitter. And they should have posted it in more than one area. But I digress. This is a missing persons report. Each week, the Oakland Police Department will highlight a missing person or an unsolved homicide. And you may have information that we need to help solve the case. On June 23, 1997, Kristen Matafari was last seen leaving the Spinelli's Coffee Shop in Crocker Gallery in San Francisco. Matafari was working at the coffee shop while attending a summer class at Cal Berkeley. She was last seen wearing a dark plaid shirt, black Spinelli's t-shirt, tan pants, and carrying a great Jansport backpack. If you have any information on this case, contact OPD's Missing Persons Unit at 510-238-3641. Folks, you might want to ask why she has remained missing for so long. The Oakland Police video only tells part of a long story of an unsolved case that has been mentioned is also part of the FBI files and has been mentioned many times in the media. This Twitter thread gives an example of the many times her name was mentioned just this year alone. For example, there was an, what this person refers to as an old Unsolved Mysteries episode. Here's another from Potomatic discussing the degrees of separation. This one on July 10th missing from her San Francisco vacation in 1997. In 1997, I was working for the mayor of Oakland, L.E.U. Harris. And we were in the second year of the Raiders having returned to Oakland from Los Angeles. This has gone on that long, and it has remained unsolved. That is shameful. Someone has to know something. Vanished. They said Robert Durst was suspected. Let's take a look at that. This Charlotte Observer entry from 2015 discusses the supposition that Kristen Montefiore's disappearance is tied to Robert Durson murder, as murder suspect. And it explains that the search for her stopped briefly at the feet of Durst. It reads that now the family of Modafari, a Charlotte teen who vanished during a summer stay in San Francisco almost 18 years ago, to the point of this, reportedly may ask investigators to revisit Durst as a suspect in her disappearance. Police probing the 97 disappearance of Modafari and Karen Mitchell the Bay Area 16-year-old first checked out Durst in 2003, but nothing appeared to come of it. At the time, the eccentric New York real estate multimillionaire was on trial for murder and dismemberment of his Galveston, Texas neighbor. Durst claimed the killing was self-defense and was cleared of all charges. And now he faces a new murder charge in Los Angeles. And this one linked to the 2000 death of a longtime friend. An author who's followed Durst for years told the New York Daily News that Durst's arrest may revive efforts to solve the mystery of two missing girls. So that's the last link I read about this. This is 2015. Here's an entry from the Daily Mail, which explains that the sister of Kristen begged Durst 
the killer to come clean and help end 18 years of agony for her family. It says here the Oakland police have ruled out a link between Durst and her, but the FBI has investigated the connection between Durst and Kristen's appearance, disappearance. So the fact that the Oakland police posted the video that I showed you on Twitter an hour ago means that, quite apparently, they don't think Durst has anything to do with it, and this is still very much a cold case. The case seemed to ground to a complete halt in 2018, according to Mike Moffat, then of sfgate.com, uh, the website of the San Francisco Chronicle. He reports that Montefiore was identified as having lived in Oakland, even though she was found or last seen in San Francisco at the Crocker Galleria. But she was renting a house, or rather in a house, that was located in Oakland at 274 Jane Street. 274 Jane Street is the last known residence of Kristen Modafari, an 18-year-old college student from North Carolina who was spending the summer in the Bay Area in order to attend a photography course at UC Berkeley. She disappeared June 23, 1997 after finishing her shift as a barista at Spinelli's Coffee Shop in the Crocker Galleria Shopping Center in San Francisco. And it says, read what happened to Kristen Marfrey, 20 year year search for answers in SF cold case. And then it writes that in the weeks and months following her disappearance, much of the effort to find her focused on Land's Inn, where she may have traveled to after work, possibly to attend a party at Baker Beach. Bloodhounds picked up her scent at the Muni Geary 38 bus stop near the Galleria and along Ocean Beach. This is, then it says, but what if she returned to the Oakland house she was renting with four male roommates? This is at, on Jane Street. And it goes on that uh, Dusty offered Montefiore's family the services of his three-legged black Labrador buster whose uncanny sense of smell was instrumental in locating the remains of World War II soldiers missing in action. At least on the grounds of the Jane house, Buster let out a loud bark each time he sniffed a vent leading to the basement. But while the lab caught the scent of human decomposition chemicals, which Dossie said can remain in cell for centuries, he could not say if they indicated the remains of Montefiore or someone else, he suggested that Oakland police excavate a poorly finished slab in the basement and take soil samples. In addition, he proposed that the students' roommates be re-interviewed. Dottie and Dr. Arpad Voss, one of the nation's leading forensic anthropologists, revisited the site in February of last year. Voss used a proprietary device he developed to detect human decomposition chemicals and scan the area. It pinpointed a location between the 274 Jane Avenue house and the house next door, 278 Jane Avenue. The indication this was more of a crime scene than a burial because of the analysis that was done. And he writes, indeed, a burial in the basement of 274 Jane Avenue house would have been exceedingly difficult because the basement floor is comprised of dense, hard-packed clay, which would have been difficult to pierce with a shovel. This writes, at the time Kristen disappeared, the house next door was a halfway house for convicted drug offenders and other felons. The fact that, according to Mahone and Dosti, escaped the notice of Oakland police until Mahone, who's, who found out while canvassing the neighborhood, told them. 
Oakland Police Public Information Officer Felicia Alice Thorpe said in an email last month that they need to confirm the Dosti and Van's fast findings by running their own tests, but have been able to do so. Quote, at this time, the information we need from Dr. Voss to collect samples for his human decomposition testing has not been forwarded to the department. Additionally, no information regarding the more recent blood testing conducted on the porch has been disclosed to the department. Both Dottie and Voss denied this was the case, saying that Oakland Police Department had more than enough data to conduct its own tests. All OPD needs to do is bring their own dogs to that site and see what happens. Voss wrote in an email earlier this month. I'm quite sure that Paul told OPD how to look for human-specific volatile organic compounds or VOCs and collected soil samples. All you need is a GCMS or gas chromatograph coupled with a mass spectrometer, which every university or crime lab in the world has. The procedure is very straightforward. Dottie echoed the sentiment. They're scientists, they should know this, he said of the police technician. More than a year after Voss tests progress on this potential lead, the first in the case in many years seems to have ground to a complete halt. The location that they're talking about, 274 and 278 James Jane Avenue, is in Adams Point in Oakland. And it's 11 beds, 7 baths, 4,531 square foot multifamily unit. Let's take a closer look. This is actually my neighborhood, about a couple of blocks from where I live. Wow. This is 278 Jane Avenue. Let's click on it. Go. Yep. 278 Jane Avenue is there, and 274 is next to it. See, it's 278 Jane Avenue. So if we were to go over here and just go click over there, that's 275 Jane Avenue. So we just go click over here, 278. And then if we go over here and here just a bit more and then move this way, we find that's 286 Jane Avenue. And then go down the street over here. And here. And we simply turn over here this way. multi-family can go here down the map and see the street this is Jane and move this way that's 271 Jane Avenue. And then 275 Jane Avenue and 274 between it. So this is the, uh, the neighborhood, if you will. That's the, that's the 
place that she lived. This place. 274 Jane Avenue. Which is also listed as 271 Jane Avenue, interestingly, but 274 Jane Avenue. Here. Another SF Gate article points to this man who has tried for 20 years to find out what happened to her. His name is Dennis Mahone. Among other things, Dennis Mahone reports that there was a connection to a man who gave more information than a normal tipster would give. And his name was mysterious. Interestingly, John Onuma, described as a short 36-year-old man with hair down to his waist, who had denied being a tipster and then admitted to it. He had a girlfriend named Jim Lampo, and it says his, his information on the tip was bogus. Police cleared the woman who, was, who Onuma believed had conspired to have his then-girlfriend, Jim Lampo fired. In a 2003 Reader's Digest article, former Oakland police officer Patrick Mahani, who worked the case, was quoted as saying, he gave us too many details. When people do that, we know they're not giving us a tip, they're telling us a story. Mahani and his fellow investigator, Sergeant John Bradley, looked into Anuma's background and eventually found several Bay Area women who had responded to classified ads placed by Anuma. They claimed he had tried to coerce them into sex or steal money from them, but they had not reported him because they feared retaliation. And then he was featured on America's Most Wanted. And one of the women called him a human vampire. And um made some other gruesome claims and ABC 7 reported that he contacted them last year which at this time was 2018 so that was 2017 he regretted calling the newsroom he said he put the attention on himself when he should have not done he says he screwed up and the police say that a new what lives reportedly in Hawaii at this time and he is not a suspect but remains a person of interest. Efforts to reach him for comment in the case were unsuccessful. And then Numa's one-time girlfriend, Jim Jolopo Lampo, was never a suspect, but she had an interesting connection to Kristen. Mahon said Lampo told him that just before she began dating Anuma, she broke up with a man named Matthew Luke, who was a close friend of one of Kristen's co-workers, at Spinelli, Kelly Strathman. And Mahone said he called Luke, whose name was given to him by a Spinelli's employee to see if he could get contact information for Strathman. But when Mahone mentioned Kristen's name, Luke became very hostile and told me never to call him again. Mahone said Luke eventually worked at Spinelli's as well, but after Kristen disappeared, it's discussing you know, chemical clumes about um, this is goes back to the house that I mentioned and um, he says Mahone said Kristen told her roommates Sunday June 22nd the day before she went missing that she had been to a summer solstice party the previous night held at Ocean Beach um, and then Mahone is now taking care of his elderly father in Charlotte so he has less time to sleuth cold cases. Uh, he says he has no regrets that he spent a third of his life trying to solve the case. This is a public group called Help Find Kristen Modafiri on Facebook. That was a full story. This was posted 2017, June 7th. The latest entry, however, was June 23rd of this year. Never lose hope, find all missing. Bob Modafferi writes, 
Happy 41st birthday, Kristen. We miss you always. Just as much as we did on the day you met with missing in San Francisco 23 years ago. Findkristen.com. So hopefully they post this video as an update since the Oakland police, quite obviously, are still actively looking for Kristen. In closing for now, there's a website, findkristen.com. Along with Kristen's podcast, contact, and a 23-year case summary. But I highly recommend joining a group, if you have, only if you have any tips. Any information regarding Kristen, this is Dennis Mahone's phone number and email. So in closing, subscribe to Zenny62 and bookmark oaklandnewsnow.com.